Macrophages, sometimes called macrophagocytes, are cells produced by the differentiation of monocytes in tissues. Macrophages were discovered by Elia Mechnikov, a Russian bacteriologist, in 1884. Human macrophages are about 21 micrometers in diameter. Monocytes and macrophages are phagocytes. Macrophages function in both non-specific defense as well as help initiate specific defense mechanisms of vertebrate animals. Macrophages have the unique ability to metabolize one amino acid, arginine, to either a killer molecule or a repair molecule. Macrophages predominantly expressing the killer phenotype are called M1 macrophages, whereas those involved in tissue repair are called M2 macrophages. The role of macrophages is to phagocytus, or engulf and then digest, cellular debris and pathogens either as stationary or as mobile cells. They also stimulate lymphocytes and other immune cells to respond to pathogens. They are specialized phagocytic cells that attack foreign substances, infectious microbes and cancer cells through destruction and ingestion. They are present in all living tissues, and have a function in regeneration. Macrophages can be identified by specific expression of a number of proteins including CD14, CD40, CD11B, CD64, F4 M1, lysozyme M, MAC1 slash MAC3 and CD68 by flow cytometry or immunous to chemical staining. They move by action of amoeboid movement. Life cycle, when a monocyte enters damaged tissue through the endothelium of a blood vessel, a process known as the leukocyte extravasation, it undergoes a series of changes to become a macrophage. Monocytes are attracted to a damaged site by chemical substances through chemotaxis, triggered by a range of stimuli including damaged cells, pathogens and cytokines released by macrophages already at the site. At some sites such as the testis, macrophages have been shown to populate the organ through proliferation. Unlike short-lived neutrophils, Macrophages survive longer in the body up to a maximum of several months. Function Phagocytosis Macrophages are highly specialized in removal of dying or dead cells and cellular debris. This role is important in chronic inflammation, as the early stages of inflammation are dominated by neutrophil granulocytes, which are ingested by macrophages if they come of age. The neutrophils are at first attracted to a site, where they proliferate, before they are phagocytized by the macrophages. When at the site, the first wave of neutrophils, after the process of aging and after the first 48 hours, stimulate the appearance of the macrophages whereby these macrophages will then ingest the aged neutrophils. The removal of dying cells is, to a greater extent, handled by fixed macrophages, which will stay at strategic locations such as the lungs, liver, neural tissue, bone spleen and connective tissue, ingesting foreign materials such as pathogens and recruiting additional macrophages if needed. When a macrophage ingests a pathogen, the pathogen becomes trapped in a phagosome, which then fuses with a lysosome. Within the phagolysosome, enzymes and toxic peroxides digest the pathogen. However, some bacteria, such as Mycobacterium tuberculosis, have become resistant to these methods of digestion. Typhoidal salmonellae to induce their own phagocytosis by host macrophages in vivo, and inhibit digestion by lysosomal action, thereby use macrophages to replicate and cause macrophage apoptosis. Macrophages can digest more than 100 bacteria before they finally die due to their own digestive compounds. Role in adaptive immunity, macrophages are versatile cells that play many roles. As scavengers, they rid the body of worn-out cells and other debris. Along with dendritic cells, they are foremost among the cells that present antigen, a crucial role in initiating an immune response. As secretory cells, monocytes and macrophages are vital to the regulation of immune responses and the development of inflammation. They produce a wide array of powerful chemical substances including enzymes, complement proteins, and regulatory factors such as interleukin-1. At the same time, they carry receptors for lymphokines that allow them to be activated into single-minded pursuit of microbes and tumor cells. 
After digesting a pathogen, a macrophage will present the antigen of the pathogen to the corresponding helper T cell. The presentation is done by integrating it into the cell membrane and displaying it attached to an MHC class II molecule, indicating to other white blood cells that the macrophage is not a pathogen, despite having antigens on its surface. Eventually, the antigen presentation results in the production of antibodies that attach to the antigens of pathogens, making them easier for macrophages to adhere to with their cell membrane and phagocytus. In some cases, pathogens are very resistant to adhesion by the macrophages. The antigen presentation on the surface of infected macrophages in a lymph node stimulates Th1 to proliferate. When a B cell in the lymph node recognizes the same unprocessed surface antigen on the bacterium with its surface-bound antibody, the antigen is endocytosed and processed. The processed antigen is then presented in MHCII on the surface of the B cell. T cells that express the T cell receptor which recognizes the antigen MHCII complex cause the B cell to produce antibodies that help opsonization of the antigen so that the bacteria can be better cleared by phagocytes. Macrophages provide yet another line of defense against tumor cells and somatic cells infected with fungus or parasites. Once a T cell has recognized its particular antigen on the surface of an aberrant cell, the T cell becomes an activated effector cell, producing chemical mediators known as lymphokines that stimulate macrophages into a more aggressive form. Some believe that there are several activated forms of macrophages. In spite of a spectrum of ways to activate macrophages, there are two main groups designated M1 and M2. M1 macrophages, as mentioned earlier, M1 killer macrophages are activated by LPS and IFN gamma, and secrete high levels of IL-12 and low levels of IL-10. In contrast, the M2 repair designation broadly refers to macrophages that function in constructive processes like wound healing and tissue repair and those that turn off damaging immune system activation by producing anti-inflammatory cytokines like IL-10. M2 is the phenotype of resident tissue macrophages, and can be further elevated by IL-4. M2 macrophages produce high levels of IL-10, TGF-beta and low levels of IL-12. Tumor-associated macrophages are mainly of the M2 phenotype, and seem to actively promote tumor growth. Role in muscle regeneration, the first step to understanding the importance of macrophages in muscle repair, growth, and regeneration is that there are two a euro or waivers a euro of macrophages with the onset of damageable muscle user euro subpopulations that do and do not directly have an influence on repairing muscle. The initial wave is a phagocytic population that comes along during periods of increased muscle use that are sufficient to cause muscle membrane lysis and membrane inflammation which can enter and degrade the contents of injured muscle fibers. These early invading, phagocytic macrophages reach their highest concentration about 24 hours following the onset of some form of muscle cell injury or reloading. Their concentration rapidly declines after 48 hours. The second group is the non-phagocytic types that are distributed near regenerative fibers. These peak between two and four days and remain elevated for several days during the hopeful muscle rebuilding. The first subpopulation has no direct benefit to repairing muscle, while the second non-phagocytic group does. It is thought that macrophages release soluble substances that influence the proliferation, differentiation, growth, repair, and regeneration of muscle, but at this time the factor that is produced to mediate these effects is unknown. It is known that macrophages' involvement in promoting tissue repair is not muscle-specific. They accumulate in numerous tissues during the healing process phase following injury. Role in wound healing Macrophages are essential for wound healing. They replace polymorphonuclear neutrophils as the predominant cells in the wound by two days after injury. Attracted to the wound site by growth factors released by platelets and other cells, Monocytes from the bloodstream enter the area through blood vessel walls. Numbers of monocytes in the wound peak one to one and a half days after the injury occurs. Once they are in the wound site, monocytes mature into macrophages. The spleen contains half the body's monocytes in reserve ready to be deployed to injured tissue. The macrophage's main role is to phagocytize bacteria and damaged tissue, 
and they also debride damaged tissue by releasing proteases. Macrophages also secrete a number of factors such as growth factors and other cytokines, especially during the third and fourth post-wounding days. These factors attract cells involved in the proliferation stage of healing to the area. Macrophages may also restrain the contraction phase. Macrophages are stimulated by the low oxygen content of their surroundings to produce factors that induce and speed angiogenesis and they also stimulate cells that re-epithelialize the wound, create granulation tissue, and lay down a new extracellular matrix. By secreting these factors, macrophages contribute to pushing the wound healing process into the next phase. Role in limb regeneration, scientists have elucidated that as well as eating up material debris. Macrophages are involved in the typical limb regeneration in the salamander. They found that removing the macrophages from a salamander resulted in failure of limb regeneration and a scarring response. Role in iron homeostasis. As described above, macrophages play a key role in removing dying or dead cells and cellular debris. Erythrocytes have a lifespan on average of 120 days and so are constantly being destroyed by macrophages in the spleen and liver. Macrophages will also engulf macromolecules, and so play a key role in the pharmacokinetics of parenteral ions. The ion that is released from the hemoglobin is either stored internally in ferritin or is released into the circulation via ferroportin. In cases where systemic iron levels are raised, or where inflammation is present, raised levels of herpidin act on macrophage ferroportin channels, leading to iron remaining within the macrophages. Tissue macrophages. A majority of macrophages are stationed at strategic points where microbial invasion or accumulation of foreign particles is likely to occur. These cells together as a group are known as the mononucleophagocyte system and were previously known as the reticular endothelial system. Each type of macrophage, determined by its location, has a specific name. Investigations concerning copper cells are hampered because in humans, Copper cells are only accessible for immunoistic chemical analysis from biopsies or autopsies. From rats and mice, they are difficult to isolate, and after purification, only approximately 5 million cells can be obtained from one mouse. Macrophages can express paracrine functions within organs that are specific to the function of that organ. In the testis for example, Macrophages have been shown to be able to interact with Leydig cells by secreting 25 hydroxycholesterol, an oxysterol that can be converted to testosterone by neighboring Leydig cells. Also, testicular macrophages may participate in creating an immune privileged environment in the testis, and in mediating infertility during inflammation of the testis. Disease, due to their role in phagocytosis, Macrophages are involved in many diseases of the immune system. For example, they participate in the formation of granulomas, inflammatory lesions that may be caused by a large number of diseases. Some disorders, mostly rare, of ineffective phagocytosis and macrophage function have been described, for example, as a host for intracellular pathogens. In their role as a phagocytic immune cell macrophages are responsible for engulfing pathogens to destroy them. Some pathogens subvert this process and instead live inside the macrophage. This provides an environment in which the pathogen is hidden from the immune system and allows it to replicate. Diseases with this type of behavior include tuberculosis and leishmaniasis. Tuberculosis, once engulfed by a macrophage, the causative agent of tuberculosis, Mycobacterium tuberculosis, avoids cellular defenses and uses the cell to replicate. Leishmaniasis, upon phagocytosis by a macrophage, the leishmania parasite finds itself in a phagocytic vacuole. Under normal circumstances, this phagocytic vacuole would develop into a lysosome and its contents would be digested. Leishmania alter this process and avoid being destroyed. Instead, they make a home inside the vacuole. Kikungunya, infection of macrophages in joints is associated with local inflammation during and after the acute phase of kikungunya. Others, adenovirus can remain latent in host macrophage, with continued viral shedding 6 a year or 18 months after initial infection. 
Bruchella SPP can remain latent in macrophage via inhibition of phagosome urolysosome fusion. Causes brucellosis. Heart disease, macrophages are the predominant cells involved in creating the progressive plaque lesions of atherosclerosis. HIV infection, macrophages also play a role in human immunodeficiency virus infection. Like T cells, macrophages can be infected with HIV, and even become a reservoir of ongoing virus replication throughout the body. HIV can enter the macrophage through binding of GP120 to CD4 and second membrane receptor, CCR5. Both circulating monocytes and macrophages serve as a reservoir for the virus. Cancer, macrophages contribute to tumor growth and progression. Attracted to oxygen-starved and necrotic tumor cells they promote chronic inflammation. Inflammatory compounds such as tumor necrosis factor alpha released by the macrophages activate the gene switch nuclear factor kappa BNFIB then enters the nucleus of a tumor cell and turns on production of proteins that stop apoptosis and promote cell proliferation and inflammation. Moreover macrophages serve as a source for many proangiogenic factors including vascular endothelial factor, tumor necrosis factor alpha, granulocyte macrophage colony stimulating factor and IL-1 and IL-6 contributing further to the tumor growth. Macrophages have been shown to infiltrate a number of tumors. Their number correlates with poor prognosis in certain cancers including cancers of breast, cervix, bladder and brain. Tumor-associated macrophages are thought to acquire an M2 phenotype, contributing to tumor growth and progression. Recent study findings suggest that by forcing IFNI plus or minus expression in tumor-infiltrating macrophages, it is possible to blunt their innate protimoral activity and reprogram the tumor microenvironment toward more effective dendritic cell activation and immune effector cell cytotoxicity. Obesity Increased number of pro-inflammatory macrophages within obese adipose tissue contributes to obesity complications including insulin resistance and diabetes type 2. Media. See also, dendritic cell, histiocyte, references. External links, HIV in the macrophage A book on the role of macrophages in AIDS pathogenesis, the role of macrophages in HIV pathogenesis, Macrophages News Macrophages News provided by Insciences Organization, www.macrophages.com The Macrophage Community Website